Boston Bruins get a very tough loss in Game 2 against the Toronto Maple Leafs in a game where we've seen lots of problems that will need to be fixed if they at least want a chance in the remainder of this series. So I'm going to be talking about that. I kind of have a real reason why this team lost. There was a some pretty evident mistakes there. Let me talk about the goaltending situation, as I would say this series will always have a discussion about at any point, as well as a very scary injury update that we are going to have here uh, going into Game 3. So I'm going to be talking about all of that here in this video. Before we get into it, we know say 81% of you guys watching right now are not subscribed to the channel. If you're looking for a spot to get all of your Boston Bruins news, you're in the right spot. Make sure to hit the sub button. Join me along here as we cover the rest of this series, heading into a very deep playoff run, we can only hope. But I'm going to be talking about this first topic here, and this could be a very, very detrimental situation for the Boston Bruins, and that is the injury to Andrew Peak. Andrew Peak left today's game after blocking a shot with his hand and did not return. And Jim Montgomery did not have an update afterwards. Here's what Connor Ryan had to say. Montgomery has no update on Peak after only playing uh, 10 minutes, I believe was what it was. Yeah, 10 minutes and 20 seconds time on ice in this game. And I'm going to say this. This this Andrew Peak uh, line that he was on, it was very noticeable that he was missing it was very noticeable that his presence was gone, that that uh, the whole defensive scheme was a bit messed up when they were running with five defense. And that was a really big issue leading to uh, this loss later on in the game. And throughout the game, you could noticeably see this defense getting worse and worse as they couldn't really get a line partner that they could stick with throughout the entire game. And this was a bit of, this is a bit of a, a scary situation. You know, when Andrew Peak, when they acquired him, they fit him into the perfect role that they needed. And his role in that last game, in game one, was perfect. He was very, very good. And as well as for the regular season, and it was a very big hole that we had seen here today uh, in this loss to the Toronto Maple Leafs. So that's going to be something that is going to be a very big point of concern going forward into game three. Now, we do have Parker Watherspoon, Mason Lowry, those guys that will fill that spot likely if Andrew Peake is out. And I don't want to assume he's out. I hope he's not out. I hope it's just something that he couldn't return to the game. But for the game in Toronto in Game 3, he'll be fine. But for what we've seen now, this is a pretty tough situation to go forward in. And I will be keeping you guys updated. But we have to assume that he could be out long term, which we really hope not. But let's move on to our second topic again here. We, have, we know this was a, a tough loss. And we recognize that there is a specific reason why this team lost this game and it was it was not very hard to see to many people here and, and this was the penalty minutes i'll move that there you go so you can see the 10 penalty minutes for the boston bruins now the toronto maple leafs also had 10 penalty minutes so realistically it shouldn't matter but the penalties the boston bruins had were not ideal they had two too many men penalties the first one which at that point, really just turned the whole game around after scoring two goals on that power play. One from Tyler Bertuzzi, the high stick, not counting. Then John Tavares coming, uh, spinning on that shot, and just putting it right over Allmark's pad. That's one issue that is going to need to be fixed. You cannot afford to let up a penalty kill, especially penalties like that, penalties where they are easily controllable. You cannot let that dictate a game against a Toronto Maple Leafs team that their offense is so good they will score on a power play when given a chance. Now, there was two too many men calls. One of them, the second of those, should not have been a penalty as Ryan Reeves was holding holding them into the bench, holding the holding the stick of our player in the bench, not allowing him to change. Now, how that was called a too many men penalty, I don't know. He couldn't get back to the bench if he tried. The stick was fully in the Bruins bench, so was our player, and that's just ridiculous. The penalty on Charlie Coyle should not have counted as a penalty. It should have been a five-on-three for the Bruins, but the discipline needs to be a bit better. We've seen the Maple Leafs. They, in this game, were still very, very uh, fired up, and they were willing to take a penalty. You know, they were taking penalties, really, really bad penalties, and the Bruins need to take advantage of that by not retaliating, not taking stupid penalties of their own, and being able to take advantage of on the man advantage. That is gonna that's what they're gonna need to do to beat this Toronto Maple Leafs team. And that was really the main issue that I personally noticed here this game, especially at that high sticking the the point of that high sticking uh goal called off from that too many men penalty, that really swayed this com game completely in a 180 degrees. The momentum got taken straight out of the Bruins from that point on, and it was very noticeable to see, and that needs to be fixed for next game, you know. 
one thing that's what we talk. I'll be talking about this as well up until next game. We still have a few days. Whether it's going to be in videos, live streams, or whatnot, this is going to be a topic of concern until we see this fixed, hopefully in game three. But we also want to talk about this. I, if I were to take a guess, I think I know who's going to start game three. And now this game was absolutely not Linus Allmark's fault. He played a fantastic game. This game would have been six one five one seven one if he had not been in net. If it was either of the goalies. They kept them in this game, no matter who would have been in that. You can see uh, Allmark here on the bottom of the screen. Let me show you. 33 shots against and 30 saves. 909 save percentage. Now, the the Matthews goal, that breakaway, nothing really could have done there. Charlie McAvoy didn't make the best play, in my opinion. I could be, your opinion could be different than mine, but I really don't think Charlie McAvoy made the most ideal play there. There's a few bounces off the, off the, the stanchions on the glass, along the boards, that really just, you know kind of made no sense in the in the whole goaltending aspect of things, but Linus Allmark did play a very good game, robbed three goals from the Maple Leafs, and kept them in this game to right till the end, and just didn't end up the way that we wanted to. The Maple Leafs really seemed to want it more, and uh, that's that's the name of the game in the playoffs. If the team that wants it more is going to win, but Jeremy Swayman's net is going to be game three. That's fully my opinion, and that's what I think is going to happen. They committed to the goalie rotation this game, I think it was the right decision, you know, why go away from it? I know that Swayman was the hot hand right now, better against the Maple Leafs, but if you change up the rotation, we got mad at Jim, um, Jim Montgomery last year for doing that, it would have been the same this year, and there's always going to be someone not happy with Jim Montgomery's decision on their goalies uh, heading into, you know, whatever game that we're going to go into here in the playoffs, especially game three. It's going to be Jeremy Swayman. It should be Jeremy Swayman. And many people thought it should be Jeremy Swayman today, but Jim Montgomery had went out and said that after the game, he was not regretting his decision in any way. And that's the absolutely right way to think about this, the right way to analyze this game from his standpoint. But a lot of things that just need to be tweaked, very, very slight, uh, very slight tweak will help this team go on. But it was no trouble to tell that the Maple Leafs wanted it more in this game. The Bruins are going to need to fix up a few things. But ultimately, I don't think this game is horrible from the Boston Bruins. But you could tell that there was a few issues that needed to be fixed. And a lot of things out of their control. But here's really what I... Uh, I, I liked exactly what this uh, Twitter user said. Bruins low, low quality Bruins fan. So, after the game three, not a dub. Peak injury actually feels massive. You can track this loss back to the first too many men penalty. Top six completely caved once Tavares tied. McAvoy has to be better and have fun debating the goalie switch. And I just realized I pretty much just said all of that. <laughs> that was not planned. But, uh, you know, that just goes to show how noticeable that this loss was, this game was, to everybody here on this, uh, I guess, watching the game as well as them playing. It was really just a... A very tough situation to watch, but things will be things will be going going ch to change before the next game, whether it be minor, major stuff. But I think Jim Montgomery notices that this is going to be a, a great learning experience to go into Game Three and see what they're gonna see what they're gonna want to change ahead of uh, this next game in Toronto. So let me know what you think here in this in about this game and here in this video. Uh, it was a pretty tough one. You know, I'll be streaming once again. I streamed today before the game. I'll be streaming once again uh, before next game. Maybe before, but we'll see. But uh, this is going to be a huge thing that I will be talking uh, again, again in tomorrow's video. Just kind of a, a quick analysis tonight. I, I'm i not too happy with this game. I'll be honest with you. I'm pretty disappointed, but I believe this team can still turn this around. We've seen it in game one. They wanted it more. They came out firing on all cylinders, and that team is not gone. That team is still here somewhere. We just need to unlock it again. But like I said, let me know what you think about this, uh, this game here tonight, what they need to change what you thought about it, but uh, that's all I got here in this video. Like I said, I'm signing out. That's all I got. Thank you for watching. Hope you have a great day. See you later.